aloha in our day. Spread a little aloha around the world. And breakfast with Bob. Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome back, everybody. Breakfast with Bob, our Nice World Championship Edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are brought to you by Master Spas as fuels go longer. Hoka lets uh, human let fly, human fly, the Boar Wetsuits, Quintana Roo, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, she is ready for Ironman World Championship in Nice. Nina Daron joins us. Nina, how are you? Hi, Bob. I'm great. Thanks to you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to talk to you. Well, I got to interview your your silver medal winning sister uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so were you there at the Olympics watching? Yeah, yeah. I was lucky enough to go and watch her. Um, so, yeah, it was really great. That was in Paris. So it was cl pretty close to home. So, uh, yeah, um, of course, we didn't uh, couldn't expect her to have such a great day, but she did. And uh, the whole family was there. So it was really a special day for all of us. Now, did you really get into the sport when you were five, five years old? I think I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, there's a uh, picture evidence uh, of us or me um, as a five year old girl with uh, like you know the, the swimming eight uh, yes. and uh, the little bikes and uh, you know um, I mean back then I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just trying to probably get to. To, uh, from one point to the other as quick as possible um, and it was a lot of fun um, it was just a game back then um, yes. and yeah it was yeah I was part of the Ironman Switzerland um, in my hometown of Zurich um, so it was a big event every year and uh, they had a kids race that was yeah what we did every summer um, so yeah that's uh, how I and my sisters got into the sport now, were, yeah. you, were, were mom and dad into triathlon or is it just because it was in Zurich that you guys got connected? Yeah, I think it's always the big question who started first, my parents or us. But I think yes. actually it was around the same time or maybe it was my mom. There was like a women's triathlon uh, specifically for women um, back then also in our um, hometown. And she started um, doing that uh, also out of curiosity um, and then she realized, oh, my kids could uh, have some fun there. And uh, um, and then my dad got into it as well. And they started doing uh, Ironmans. Um, so, yeah, it was like the whole family, I think, started together um, doing triathlon. Well, and when yeah. did, when did you start to feel because you, you stayed in triathlon age group? And when, yeah. did, you, when did you decide that you wanted to be a professional? Um, I didn't really have like made a decision or remember what, when it was it was more like I got to the through the junior ranks when I was younger I did some other sports as well but it was always trust and was the constant um and then at the end of my junior years I had like a big um, back injury and I kind of went out of the sport I didn't really know if I w would be able to do triathlon again and even if I wanted to um and then when I felt like okay I do some more training I entered a half Ironman mm -hmm. and I just had so much fun, uh, a lot more fun than during the, the drafting races I did a few years um, before. Um, and then I started training more and um, started also training with the Brad Sutton squad. And um, they were like, Hi, there's no, no reason why not to go pro. So just try it. And uh, pretty quickly after my first age group uh, 7.3, I think a year after I started racing professionally and uh I just loved it so it wasn't really a decision it was more like the the progress yes. <laughs> yeah so, yeah when I look at Nice what a lot of people talk about is the you know how the the, the bike handling you need for the downhills and the major climbs but when I look at you with your background at Embram uh I, you were just took fourth at Ironman Nice um also Optuez these are all brutal lots of climbing lots of descending are, are those your favorite type of races um yeah I really like that maybe it's also because I'm from Switzerland so uh you know everywhere yeah. where you go riding you have to look for flat sections if you want the flex that flat sections um everywhere there's mountains you can climb and also descending um, but I really love those courses and I, I think they also suit me, suit my strengths. So, of course, I also sometimes pick those races um, because I, I think they suit me. 
Um, yeah. So when you were, took fourth at Nice, uh, obviously you're in you know, a very similar course you were due for the world championship. What, what do you like about this course? Uh, pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Nice is such a wonderful place. I've been lucky enough to do the 7.3 Worlds there a few years ago, and yep. I already loved it back then. So there's just a really nice combination of the beach, but also the city life. So the, the place is just great to be in general. And then the course is like so diverse. You have um, like an ocean swim. It's probably non-wetsuit. So um, you have to be a strong swimmer. Um, then out on the bike, uh, like you talked about it, um, there's a lot of variety. There's some flex sections, yeah. but climbing, descending, um, you really have to be on for the whole time. Uh, you cannot um, spend any energy on anything else than concentrating on on the course. Um, and then you come back down and have to run. And I actually like that it's four laps. I think it's a bit, yeah, you can put it in your mind. Okay, one lap and three to go. And then there's less and less laps to go. Um, there's a lot of spectators um, because yes. of those four laps, so that really helps as well. I remember back in July or June, it was it was really it was really helpful to have the people cheering for you because of course it's also a tough course. Um, usually you have some headwind or then tailwind um, together with the the temperature that's climbing throughout the day. It's just yeah, it makes it. Uh, really tough, um, tough course and diverse. So yeah, I think um, the best athlete will win. So that's, that's just great. Well, good for yeah. you. And, and so during this time, have you trained a lot with, uh, since you're part of the Brett Sutton group with Daniela Reef? Um, sometimes this summer, of course, um, the swim sessions are always together. So we, we swam together. Um, of course, she probably told you she had some injury problems. So she wasn't at all of our track sessions or bike sessions right. but um we saw her around and we chatted uh sometimes um and even now like since she's retired she she has come back up here and still has done some uh swim sessions with us so yeah it's been nice to see her and having a legend like that you know you're swimming next to them and knowing that what they've accomplished that has to be a positive oh it definitely is and it's um you know, she's also just a human being and you kind of, when you're just swimming there, you forget what she has achieved, but she really has done so much. Um, she's achieved so many great things and also for, for the sport in, in Switzerland, but in general, she has been like a role model um, for for us females, but I think everyone, um, yeah. What do you look at as the best race you've ever had? Oh, um, that's very difficult. I hope it's uh, still to come, <laughs> my best race. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, for both uh, or the races where I um, qualified for the World Championships, I think those were really good races. Um, it was also like a goal of mine this year was really to qualify. So I think in, in Lake Placid, I had a solid race all over um, to to get that um, nice spot. Yes. Um, but yeah, in general, I'm really happy with this season. Like every race has been going well um, and has been going better than I expected. Um, I had some health issues the last season. So this year I'm just, yeah, I'm so happy it's going better. And like, it's really motivating to to see the the progress I've been making in, in training and then also being able to apply it in the races has been yeah, great. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You've had all your performances this year with this you know, sixth at Placid and second at Embrum and fourth at Nice. You've been so consistent all in 70.3 Switzerland and uh, fifth in Philippines. You, you've traveled, you've done a lot of travel, but you've also had yeah. a, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of success that when I look at your, you've done, you've done Frankfurt, you've done Optiwes, uh Embrum. There's so many, so many cool events that you've done. Uh, talk a little, I think you did Israel uh yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah yeah i i'm guessing that you love the travel aspect and seeing parts of the world you might not ever see exactly i i love that and i love it even more when um some of my uh my parents or my sisters or my boyfriend can join so that makes it easier to travel as well when you have some someone um going with you um, right. And it's just, yeah, you would never probably choose to go to these places if there wasn't a race. And um, yeah. it really is just so great to discover new places. And also, like, you know, going for a triathlon, of course, before 
before the race you're pretty focused and on the race but then you also like see different things because you have to go find a swimming pool so you might come across an area that you wouldn't as a normal tourist or you have yes. to go find some rice or whatever so it's really just a, a different kind of travel but yeah I really like it and it yeah opens your eyes to the world uh, a lot more than otherwise when you meet people that you never would have met who become can become lifelong friends in these these places that you probably never would have gone to exactly and it's funny like also I've been uh, in Australia as a high school student as an exchange student and also there I did some triathlons and I met some of these people again in um, in Paris because they're also like you know fans or yeah. supporting someone so it's it's really great to see these people again and I think yeah the sport just connects um, similar minds or similar um, people yeah yeah. So when the have the three of you competed in the same race at the same time? Um, we have um, more often when we were younger, so like juniors or even younger. And I think back then we were a bit more not competitive. We're still all really competitive, but a bit more against each other. And now it's more like you know we know how much you have to work, how hard you have to work um, for for the success. So. We are really supporting um, each other uh, a lot more or in, a, or in a better way. And like, for example, Julia and I both did Rapper's Wheel this year. And um, I think she said, oh, I love it to race with you. And I was like, yeah, I would also if I was in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, it's just, yeah, it's it's cool because we can train together and we can talk about everything that happens. And yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think... Um, She's a great support to me, and I try to be a good support for her as well. So what are your goals yeah. for Worlds in Nice? Um, yeah, it's really difficult to say, to be honest, because it's such a strong field. Yes. So it's it's hard to hard it's really hard to predict and to know. Um, to be honest, um, my goal was to qualify and then I've achieved that. So that's a big plus already. But then I also think, you know, like with the uh, courses I've done this year and and the the fitness I'm in, I, I want to have and I think I can have a strong performance. Um, so I think, yeah, um, anything is possible, but I just try to focus on myself and, and have a good race. Yeah, I think a lot of people know about Frank. Frankfurt and they know about Placid, but not that many people know about, especially in the U.S., about Optuez and Embram. What makes those races so special? Yeah, I think they're really famous in, in France. So in France, everyone knows these courses and those races are also all, always sold out within minutes after op op registration opens. Um, so those races, um, they're also all like really hilly, so really yes. hilly and technical. So that makes them unique kind of. But then also the spectators, um, will we will see it in France. They're just, or in Nice, um, in in just under two weeks and um, they're just really into the sport they fan for everyone not just the French I mean last weekend I did a French race again in Gerard Mare it's another famous one in French yes uh, in France. You got third and I got third yeah <laughs> and there was like a section on the course it was really like you would watch the Tour de France there were the people were lining there was like really loud music you couldn't hear anything like my supporter said to me because it was just so loud and people were going crazy and it's so motivating so I think that's what makes these courses so special um and yeah I I would recommend it to everyone to do them I love it I mean I have a great race at Nice it's gonna be really fun to watch you now will your sister come and watch no, unfortunately, she has some other races to get uh, ah. ready for. So uh, she won't be coming to watch this time. But, uh, you know, hopefully in the future, we'll both be at the um, Ironman World Championships and uh, can race each other. Uh, we'll it'd be see. fun to see you guys racing in Kona next year. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, we'll I see. <laughs> Nina Duran has uh, been our guest again. Breakfast with Bob, our Ironman World Championship Nice edition. Nina, thank you so much for your time and have a great race next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. Bye, everyone. Thanks, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See ya.